What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, super excited to be bringing you guys the Gen 5 Pseudo Legendary Haxorus in Ranked Regulation F. Now Haxorus, super dope Pokemon with an amazing design, has access to the brand new move Dragon Chew. And that's how we're going to be using it today, pairing it up with Dragonite, Ogre Pine, and even Dragon Terra Golden Go to boost all their critical hit ratio, making them do crazy damage. But Axtras over here is rocking the Mold Breaker ability, allowing it to hit through Golden Go's good as gold ability. So like I said, we can use Dragon Cheer on that thing, giving it a nice big time crit boost. Haxorus also has a Focus Dash as item, Rock and Breaking Swipe for stab damage and attack drops, Iron Head to clean up some of the fairy types, Dragon Cheer like we already mentioned, and last but not least, we have Protect. In our second slot, like I said, we got that Golden Go, and this Golden Go is pretty standard. Moves are the same, items usually the same, abilities the same, the only difference here is it's Rock and Dragon Tarot type to pair up with that Haxorus. We got Dragonite in our third slot, lock, rocking out with Inner Focus and the Loaded Dice. Pair that up with the critical hit boost of Haxorus, Scale Shock can do an insane amount of damage, giving it 4-5 to five critical hits. Our final three Pokemon are going to be Fluttermane. Fluttermane has a pretty standard moveset with Moonblast, Icy Wind, Taunt, Protect. Incineroar, great support Pokemon. And last but not least, like we already mentioned, we have Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond is going to be great because obviously it's Ogre Pond, but if we can boost critical hit ratio with Ogre Pond, its Ivy Cudgel is going to crit, I think, 100% of the time or a good chunk of the time. Guys, you want to rent the team for yourself? Rent the code is at the top right hand corner. But if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's hop to our first match, showcasing Haxorus. Hopping into our first match for today's video, and I want to give a huge shout out to the team creator, Mr. Kurtastic. Saw this team over on Twitter and realized it was made by you, so huge shout out to you. Thank you so much for making the scene and making it a rental code. But we're going up against a Malmar and Ursaluna Trick Room team. I believe it's Trick Room, considering they have Torterra, P2, Indeedee, and Miyashimata on top of that. We kind of want to just try to get after that. And from here, we could go Haxorus and lead it with potentially like Scale Shot or like East Speed Dragonite. That's not bad. That's not bad. Boost that critical hit ratio and get after it. Or I can go in with Golden Go, boost that critical hit ratio, and kind of just start popping, make it rains. That's not a bad idea. What's your speed? 163. And what's your speed? Kind of want to see the speeds right here. 117. So actually, this will work fine. We're going to go Haxorus and Golden Go right off the rip here. In the back end, we're going to go in with lovely little Ogre Pond. And last but not least, do we go in with Incineroar or do we go in with Fluttermane? Fluttermane's not bad considering it has to boost our energy, but if they want to pop Trick Room, hmm, I don't know how we're going to hang with that. Trick Room's a little bit of a problem. We could go Dragonite, but I mean, Dragonite's not going to be anything crazy considering if they do pop Trick Room, chances are indeed he's going to be on the field. The terrain's a little bit of a problem, so I'm just going to go Incineroar here. Incineroar in the back end. Great little Pokemon. Let's see how we do here with Haxorus in match number one. Well, my plan here is to just pop the Dragon Cheer, right? Pop it into the Golden Ghost slot and then just make it rain. Try to do some big time damage. I would love that. Big time crits. We won't have to worry about our special attack drops. And then we can just keep firing them off. Let's see who they end up leading here. P2 and Didi? Something along those lines? Let's see. We're going to go Malamar alongside with Portero, which I don't mind. I do not mind that. I do not mind that. So from here, we're going to go Dragon Cheer into you. And I'm just going to Terrasalize into Dragon Typing and pop a Make It Rain. And pop a Make It Rain. I could go for an spot this turn, but let's be real. We're going straight for the crits, looking for some big time damage. And they could pop Trick Room with Malamar. That is an option. But I'm going to hope that this Make It Rain can just stomp on it, right? Big time crits. I wish it was Steel Terror. I wish we could do this with Steel Terror, right? I wish we could. But honestly, Dragon Terror gives us that full boost. We can then get some crits. We can roll out from there. Let's see how this one plays out here. Dragon Cheer is going to outspeed everybody, boosting its critical hit ratio. I love that, that sound right there. That sound's just so sick. Golden Go is getting pumped, baby. Make It Rain's going to come out here. Bop. Big time damage. We get a crit onto the Malamar. We don't get it onto the uh, the Torterra. We're going to see a skill swap here. Come out from Torterra. Or not from Torterra, from Malamar. They're going to swap abilities. And this thing's going to drop a headlong rush, which we soak, which is nice. This thing is going to have Contrary. His defense is going to get boosted here. And my plan here is probably just to pop another Make It Rain and another Dragon Tier just to give it that full crit boost and we can get that 100% onto it, right? Because if I crit here, I could probably just KO both. Makes the most sense. But he gave Contrary over to Torterra, so it gets defense boost with Headlong Rush. Pretty cool combo right there. I don't mind it. 
So Dragon Chair is going to fly out here again. And it's going to fail. Are we already like boosted? Oh no, it has. That's my fault. That's my fault. So now we get a crit onto Torterra. But we don't get a crit over there. We can't boost it again. That's a little odd. I wish I would have known that because I would have just taken out the Malamar. That kind of sucks, man. That kind of sucks. I don't. I, I'm not that big of a Dragon Cheer enthusiast. That's real rough. I was gonna say, why would we get a crit onto one of them? I was gonna say that uh, he potentially has shell armor, but they swapped its ability. Oh no, that's exactly what happened. That's my fault. He swapped its ability. Malamar now has shell armor. Cannot be critted. And this is kind of tough because what do I do from here? I could just protect the turn. I could take out the Malamar, which I'm gonna do. Just protect the Golden Go, because Golden Go is the big threat. Yeah, so the swapping of skill swaps gives Malamar shell armor can't be critted. Okay, it makes sense now. It makes sense. It makes sense. So we're gonna see a Terra pop out here, probably from Ursaluna. Right, this just might be a normal Terra looking to go for Hyper Voice. And we just get after it that way. So they don't have any Psychic Terrain on the field, which is actually pretty nice for us. Because if they don't have Indeedee in the back end, I can come out here and fake out next turn, which could actually work out pretty well for us. So I'm gonna protect the Golden Go here. Put up a big time shield. It's gonna go for the Hyper Voice. Haxorus should be able to soak this. I just don't know what Malamar's going for. Let's be honest here. We don't know what Malamar's going for. Actually, you might not soak this, Haxorus. Oh, you do. Cool. I was gonna say, that's some big time damage. And superpowers in the fly. And double down into Golden Go. Now, from here, Breaking Swipe's going to connect. He's going to take out Malamar. Give an attack drop onto this special attacker. Not gonna really do too much. But yeah, I should have realized that he swapped with Shell Armor, and I should have doubled down into, into Malamar. I should have doubled down into Malamar. But at that point, Trick Room wouldn't have been out and about. I could have just kept spamming, make it range. It would have been a beautiful. It would have been beautiful. But P2 is going to come out here for their final Pokemon, which I don't mind too much. We just have to waste out some Trick Room turns here. We just have to waste out some Trick Room turns. So from here, I'm going to protect Haxorus, and do I go for the double protect? I might want to go for double protect. I think our best bet is to go for double protect. Let's do it. Let's go for double protect. Go ahead, Golden Go. Pull it off. Of course it doesn't. So we're not going to be able to pull that off. I think Hyper Voice KS us regardless. We're going to protect the Haxorus. And we'll go from there. We shall go from there. There's the Hyper Voice. This is going to KO us, and it's no big deal. That's why I went for double protect. It was like we were dead to this anyway. We were dead to this anyway. Oh no, we survived. And he's gonna double down into us. Yeah, we were dead anyway. So even if we went for a make it rain or anything, we were dead. So now we have one turn left in, or two turns left in Trick Room. We can fake out this turn. We could save our Ogre Pond, which is probably our best bet just to save the Ogre Pond. The real question is who do we fake out? Who are we faking out here? Who are we faking out? Ursaluna? Most likely. I mean, they're going to go for a Ice Beam, too. I mean, we can save our Haxorus. We can swap Ogre Pond in here. And that is definitely going to be my play. I'm going to swap Ogre Pond here for Haxorus. Because the reason being, we can just fake out and then protect next turn. So I'm going to do this. Fake out you, Ursaluna. And chances are Ice Beam is going to fly over into the... From the P2 into the Haxor slot. So that's why we can swap Haxor's into Ogre Pod. Then we can have Haxor's in the back end. Who's going to outspeed these guys. And give us a shot at winning. Right? An extra move could be could be the difference maker here. So we swap here. We're going to fake out the Ursa Luna. Chip up just a tad bit of damage. And this thing's going to flinch. And there's the Ice Beam. Which you soak. Right? Yeah, all day. That still did a nice chunk of damage. Let's be honest here. But from here, Spike Shield's going to be our play all day. And if we could pull off a parting shot maybe here... And just get fake out ready to go again. That'd probably be in our best interest. So I'm gonna go for a parting shot. I'd like to drop that special attack. Waste out the last turn trick him because I can't protect with Incineroar. I wish I had protect. That'd be nice, but you only get four move slots. If we had five protect would definitely be in there. Protect's just so good. The so spiky shield comes out from the ogre palm. We're really hoping they're trying to attack us. He could be going for a ground move just to take out Incineroar. We'll see. And he's gonna go for a blood move. And that definitely takes us out, right? Unless you soak, you are pretty bulky, but Blood Moon from Ursula with big damage. Soak. Hold up. Wait a minute. We eat up our berry. We got a berry. Let's see what P2's doing here. P2, what you got cooking? Try attack. Can you soak this? I don't think you soak that. No, they double down into Incineroar. 
they double down. So I could have just freely attacked with Ogre Punch. So now Trick Room is gone. It's gone. And this is where we kind of run into a little bit of a problem. Because P2 can pop another Trick Room. Ursaluna can do some big time damage. I don't really know who to attack here. Let's be honest. I think we just lose this match just because I didn't go after that Malamar. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. But I'm going to Horn Leech. Look to get back some HP. I'm going to actually double down into... Actually, I could Dragon Cheer and go for the crit boost. Oh, I could. I'm going to do that. I'm going to Dragon Cheer and go to crit this P2. Maybe Ursaluna protects. There is a chance of that happening, which would be nice. But let's see. P2's pretty bulky with the Evo Light. Let's be honest here. The Dragon Cheer flies out here. It's just tough because if I don't KO the P2, it's probably popping Trick Room. But if I don't KO the Ursaluna, it's getting off another attack. Maybe I should have just went after Ursaluna. I should have went after Ursaluna. I don't know what I'm doing. I should have went after Ursaluna here. Even though I don't think we were KOing it. We didn't even get the crit. We didn't even get the crit. And is Trick Room coming out here? Yeah, tough matchup for us. We actually played this one really well. Honestly, if we just KO the Malamar, we win. We just needed to KO that Malamar, but me not knowing Dragon Cheer and not realizing that they had Shell Armor actually loses us the first match, so that one's on me. Match number two on its way. Wish we would have grabbed ourselves a win there in match number one. All we had to do was KO the Malamar, but I didn't realize that that thing swapped its abilities and grabbed Shell Armor, which doesn't allow crits, and if I would have known that, I would have just doubled down and finished that thing off. But we're hopping into our second match, going up against a pretty standardized team, right? Tornadus, Urshavu, Fluttermane. Alongside with Rollaboom, Frigrap, and Ursaluna if they want to pop Trick Room. Not bad. I mean, I could go into Booster Energy Fluttermane here. It's going to be good because if we have to taunt, we can taunt. Which is going to be great up against the Frigrap. And on top of that, we could lead a Pokemon like Golden Go. Golden Go is not going to be bad, especially because we could just pop Mega Rains. We can go for Nasty Pots if need be. Kind of get after it that way. In our third slot, we're going to go in with Dragonite. I do like having E Speed available. It's going to be good for us. And last but not least, Incineroar could be solid here. Fake outs, intimidates, or we could just go Ogre Pond because that could be Water Urge too. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Actually, should we go in with Incineroar instead of Dragonite? Incineroar instead of Dragonite is actually pretty solid, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Incineroar instead of Dragonite. So we're 0 1 right now. Would love to go 1 and 2, or not 1 and 2, 1 and 1, and grab ourselves a win here in this matchup. But I'm kind of curious to see who they'd be because they have a bunch of different options. We're not bringing in the Haxorus here. We already showcased it in match number one, and I'll definitely use it in match number three. But right now, we need a win. We need a win. So, for them to lead, I think it's either going to be Frigraph or Tornadus. They have to lead one or the other. And it is going to be neither of them, actually. So, I'm just wrong. So, Fluttermate, Urshfu, fly through here. Um, I could actually Terrasilize into Dragon-type here. Which, honestly, isn't that bad. And the reason I say I want to Terrasilize in Dragon type is because he could potentially just go for a Make It Rain here. Or not Make It Rain, a Surging Strikes, which would do insane amount of damage into my... Into my, what's it called? Into my Golden Ghost. So I'm just going to pop a Make It Rain. I'm going to Terrasilize and predict that he's just going for a Surging Strikes into the Golden Ghost. Looking to KO it. And then just trying to hit me with Flutter Moon. So we'll see. We'll see how this one plays out here. So out's going to come the Dragon Terra from me. They're not swapping. And, uh, yeah, we'll just see how this one plays out. Here. As long as a fairy moves not flying in the Golden Ghost slot, we should be fine. Could be protecting. I don't really know what they're doing here. They're going to go for an Aqua Jet. So they're going to Aqua Jet here. That's fine. And Shadow Ball is going to fly and just KO that. Okay, I mean, not that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal. Considering they get rid of Fluttermane, we get rid of their Fluttermane. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. So make it rain flies here. Yeah, we get rid of Fluttermane. So a little Fluttermane for Fluttermane trade action. A little bit of trade. Now we're sitting in a decent typing where he can't really... Well, he can kind of hit us hard. But, I mean, we could just go into Ogre Pond here. Or I could go into Incineroar. And just fake out this turn and maybe swap or even Nasty Pot up. Yeah, that's, that's going to be your play. We're going to fake out Incineroar, probably Nasty Pot this turn. And look to get after it. And Frigraph's going to pop out here. So for Riggerath out and about, not that big of a deal. 
we can't fake out anymore, so it's kind of a big deal. And I think we just swap into... I think we just swap here. Could go for parting shot swap, but no, we're going to have to hard swap here. So we're going to hard swap into that. We're going to go for a nasty plot. And we're just going to look to boost our special attack stat. So hopefully they're going for Surge of Strikes into Ogre Pond here. We can't fake out anymore, which kind of sucks because we're going to have some field. The chances are they try to pop a trick room for Ursula. That's going to be Aqua Jet. Are you Choice Aqua Jet? Could be Choice Aqua Jet. So now we get off this nasty plot. Let's see what Ferrigi wants to do. It's got to be Trick room, right? It's got to be Trick room. Yeah, so Trick room flies out here. Um, If I had to guess, they have Ursula. And at this point, we might just want to double down into this slot. Because if they're going to swap anybody, it's going to be that slot. So I'm going to go for Make It Rain. I'm going to go for Ivy Cudgel. And we're going to have to just protect. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Aqua Jet's going to fly here. Doing zero damage. What are you, are you choice into that? Are you choice? I feel like they have to be choice. Make It Rain's going to cook. Make it rain flies through here, doing some nice damage. Ivy Cudge are gonna finish this thing off, and now we are even on the uh, special attack. So that's some nice damage right there. If I had to guess, they have Ursaluna here, ready to go. And this is a big time threat to us, Ursaluna. Ursaluna is a big time threat to us. So we could double protect here um, if we want to, just to waste out a turn. But now might be the turn just to straight up attack, right? Now might be a turn to straight up attack, because they're going to normal Terra. We already know they're going to normal Terra. I'm just going to Horn Leech just to try to get back some HP. And I'll go for a Make It Rain. I'll go for it, being neutral. So we can save our Protect. There's the, ter the Terra type here. Um, Normal Terra type, they could be going for a Blood Moon if they want to. I can't fake out with Incineroar, which is actually really tough for us. And we just have to slowly try to waste out some Trick Room turns. So again, Trick Room at the end with Earth Luna. Same thing as match number one. Helping Hand coming out here. Probably a Hyper Voice, right? And if Ogre Pond could eat up, which I think, honestly, both these guys can eat up. I don't know. Helping Hand is some damage, man. Ogre Pond does not eat up. That's tough news. That's real tough. I was really hoping Ogre Pond could eat up. I was really hoping. Because that, that's some damage right there. Make it Rain's going to fly. Can we get, like, crit or something? I like the damage output. Just not enough, man. It's not enough. Now we're sitting here. Leftover's gonna help us out a little bit. Um, huh. Now we're gonna play this one. Incineroar we're gonna come out here. Another helping hand hyper voice probably to play. We could Citrus Berry up. Um, hmm. And our best play would probably be just to protect Golden Go and then Flare Blitz. How many turns left in Trick Room? Two. Two turns are left here. Flare Blitz gonna have to fly. We have to go for KO and just protect. And just protects. So I was really hoping Ogre Pond could have ate up that shot. Because if Ogre Pond ate up that shot, man, we were sitting in the perfect position. So Protect comes out from Golden Go. We're going up against another Hyper Voice, which you should eat, Incineroar. You should eat. You're pretty bulk. If Golden Go ate up that shot, you should soak this. You should soak this. Beautiful. Now, Berry flies out. He's going to lose some HP. And this could be... Mm, this, we're cutting it close here. We are cutting it real close, because Flare Blitz should KO. And it does. Now, we take some recoil here. And there's one turn left in Trick Room. There's one turn left in Trick Room. I can't protect Golden Go anymore, so I'm going to be forced to go for a Make It Rain. And depending on what move they have, what move would Frigger have had? Dazzling Gleam, maybe? It could have Dazzling Gleam. It could have Dazzling Gleam. And I mean, I just have to kind of land a knockoff here. I'm going to go for knockoff. I'm going to go for make it rain. Last turn of Trick Room. Maybe I should have went for a double protect. That could have been good. But let's see what Frigoraf is rocking. It is rocking Dazzling Gleam. Which Incineroar Soak. So that's going to be game. And you get a crit on my... Oh, that would have been so upsetting. That would have been so upsetting. So I figured it had Dazzling Gleam. But that was my one thing. I was just like, Incineroar might be able to soak. So he ends up soaking. Knockoff flies through here. That is game, set, match. What a second battle. We're sitting one and one. Let's go hop into our third. Look to use Haxorus a little bit more. It is time for our final match. We are sitting one and one. Looking to go two and one here, but we're going up against a neutralizing gas Weezing team, which kind of makes no sense. They have Weezing, they have Shen Pao, they have Magmar, which probably support an Evo late. Alongside with Swampert, 
I think I said Chen Pao already, and then they got Frigorath and High Travel. So we definitely want to bring in Haxorus here and try to pair it up with either Dragonite or Gold Go. And honestly, let's just go in with Dragonite here. Actually, if they lead Chen Pao, that's a big time threat for us. That is a big time threat for us. But I do like E Speed, so you know what? We're going to go into it. We're going to go into these two. In the back end, we are going to bring Ogre Pond. Yeah, I like Ogre Pond here, and last but not least, either Fluttermane or Incineroar. I'm kind of leaning towards Fluttermane, especially with that boost energy. Could be really good for us. So, we're 1-1, one one, should be 2-0. Oh. Very upset. And that third, or that second match right there, actually almost ended the same way the first match did, with Trick Room Ursaluna just stomping on us, right? But luckily, my Incineroar was able to bulk up some shots and really get after it. But they're going to go for a Graph Shen Pao, which is kind of an odd lead here. Um, Haxorus does have Focus Hash, which is great, which is beautiful. And I think from here we just scale shot the Shen Pao. That is an option. Could scale shot the Shen Pao. But I'm thinking of just dragon cheering, terrestrializing, and scale shot in the Shen Pao. I think that's our best bet. I like that. But we can't E speed. We simply cannot E speed. We are going to drop our defense here, which is kind of tough. But we do get a speed boost, which is actually really nice. It is really nice. And we'll see what they want to do from here. <clears throat> we'll see what they want to do after this. But Shen Pao looking very scary with Ice Spinner. Hence the reason why I Terrasalize my Dragonite, because he would die in one shot to this. But if they Terras or if they Ice Spinner my Haxorus, I do use Focus Hash, which is beautiful. We're going to see a Terra come out from him. Who's Terrasalizing? going to be Frigoraph. What you got cooking? Fairy Terra? Yeah, so this thing's going to Fairy Terra. So he's looking to just go for a Dazzling Gleam here. Let's see who he ends up Ice Spinner. going to end up Ice Spinnering... This little boy is going to be able to soak that. So he soaks that all day. Dragon Cheer going to fly. That actually takes away our Dragon Typing, which is tough. But I'm still hoping Scale Shot can, uh, can KO the Shen Pao. That'd be a pretty big turn for us. Not bad. We need crits. We need some crits. We need some crits. We need at least one crit. Can you crit? We're just hit five times? What is going on? We don't crit. We don't crit. So our defense drops and our speed goes up. No crits coming out here. And they end up trickering, which is kind of good for us. Kind of good for us, but tough at the same time, because why aren't you critting? Why aren't you critting? Not one. Not one crit. I know we don't have the dragon. I know we don't have the, uh, the dragon type boost, but still. But still, I would think we would get at least one crit there. So from here, I can just go for a breaking swipe if I want to, but probably I'd rather just go for an iron head here and make sure that we KO. And then uh, Stomping Cancer is going to be our best bet because we can't E speed. On top of that, we can't go into a uh, we can't go into a scale shot into that either. So this thing's going to hyper voice. It's going to pop all of its stuff and things. And honestly, I should have went opposite sides here. I should have Iron Head the, uh, the what's it called slot, the Fergraph slot. But I wasn't sure if Shen Pat or if Dragonite was slower than Shen Pao. And I guess we'll never know. But Stomping Cancer is going to fly, do a little bit of damage. Um, we gotta waste out some Trick Room turns now. Trick Room turns we have to waste out. High Drapple, High Drippy Drapple's gonna come out here. But I can't E Speed, which is just so annoying. No E Speed's allowed. And. Mm, do I double protect here? Yeah, I think I do. I think I do just double protect. Slow, slow play this one out. The Axorus protects. We're gonna protect the Dragonite here as well. Chance Heart is probably Fickle Beam play. I would think it'd be Fickle Beam Hyper Voice. Which, honestly, this might be a good chance for my Haxorus to swap out here into Fluttermane, right? Because Fluttermane dodges both, and then I can waste out another turn, which would be pretty massive. Which would be pretty good for us, so yeah, I'm going to swap the Haxorus. I wish I could go for E-Speed. It'd be so nice. I wish I could. So I'm going to swap out the Haxorus for a nice, lovely Fluttermane, save our Haxorus for the back end. And if we can't get off a Scale Shot, we're going to try to drop it into the High Drippy Drapple slot. All right. Okay, I see how it's playing, but such an odd lead for them. Shen Pao with Farigarath? What is that? What is that? So we swap into Fluttermane, we do get the speed boost, Trick Room's out and about. Why are we versing so many Trick Room teams today? Kind of annoying, and there's the Fickle Beam. Beautiful. So Fickle Beam flies, does not affect me. Hyper Voice is going to fly, it's going to KO the Dragonite. But it doesn't affect Fluttermane, which is good. Which is good. So I got to see how many turns are left in Trick Room. I believe it's two. And we can protect one of them, which is actually kind of nice. But from here, we could just go into Ogre. 
probably our best bet. A little bit of Ogre Pond action. And I could just go for Follow Me here. Follow Me Ogre Pond with whatever I want to use, maybe like a Moonblast into that. And there's only one turn left in Trick Room. So why not just double protect, right? Actually, let's chunk up some damage here. Let's chunk up some damage into Free Grab because we don't want to allow them to pop another Trick Room. So I'm going to Spike Shield. I'm just going to protect my Flutter Main or uh, protect my Ogre Pond. I'm going to look to chunk up some damage. So we don't have Terra anymore. Let's see what they end up doing with the Fickle Beam monster. Kinda hoping he just protects. But we have to actually chip up some damage on the free graph because we don't want to leave it at such a high HP that it could just pop another Trick Room, right? Double sets of Trick Room get real ugly. We don't like that one bit. We don't like that one bit. The Spike Shield's gonna fly from our Ogre Pond. We'll see what he wants to do here. Maybe another Hyper Voice might fly. An Infestation comes out of here. Why are... Oh, dude, that noise just bugs me, man. No pun intended. No pun intended. And he ended up doubling down in the Flutterman, which kind of sucks, man. Honestly sucks. We do so pretty well. Moonblast's gonna fly here. Trick Room is gone. And Ivy Cudgel can finish that off. So, oh my god. They just in my headset, that noise. Oh, dude. Get it out of my face. Get it out of my face. But from here, we can simply just pop a Moonblast here. Pick up some big time damage and then just Ivy Cudgel this fruit room. Try to get rid of it. So now we're sitting in a rather decent position now that we wasted out Trick Room. And he's just gonna end up protecting Frig Ref, which is fine. No big deal. No big deal because Moonblast's still cooking. So Moonblast should be able to chunk up some nice damage. Half in it, which is good. And we do get a special attack drop, which is even better. Ivy Cudgel are gonna get blocked and we're just gonna do the same thing next turn. You give me no reason not to do the same thing next turn. Energy ball gonna cook. You soak that all day. Thank you very much. And the bugs and bees and stuff just in my ear. In my ear. So we did take out Shen Pao, which is good. We don't know their final Pokemon, but it's it's safe to say we should just throw another Moonblast and Ivy Cudgel this slot. It's real safe. So there's the withdrawal. We're gonna see their final Pokemon. We still have Haxorus in the back end, and Swampert's gonna fly. So Swampert's choosing to eat up this Moonblast, which is fine by me. Because you still take nice damage to that. Yeah, almost half. Ivy Cudgel finishes you off. And we just go for Horn Leech now in the Swampert. And Moonblast into High Travel. Game, set, match. 2-1 winning record. It sure looks like it. Because they have no first turn priority, which is good. They're not able to Terra. And just the big time swaps from us, Waste Not Shurken, was huge. Was huge in this matchup. So once I realized they went the Fickle Beam and, and uh, Hyper Voice, I was just like, yo, Flutter Main. Perfect swap in there. Oh, and you have Regenerator. It's actually kind of crazy. You have Regenerator. Didn't even realize that. So you can actually soak up a shot here, Hydrapple. Hydrippy Drapple can soak up a shot. Let's see what they do, because I'm still dealing with the bugs and all that. I'm still dealing with the bugs. So Moonblast connects, bringing it down the red. Swampert, we can wait bye-bye to you. Get on out of here. And now this, this match is just wraps. The only way they had a shot there was maybe like protecting the Swampert and... I don't even know, to be honest. Getting a crit with energy. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe double protect. Letting infestation do work. But he's going to attack my Ogre Pond. We're back to full health. And that is game set match. So I'll do that. I'll go for an Ivy Cudgel instead. That has a higher chance of critting. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. They probably canceled the match. Get on out of here. Get them on out of here. A little 2-1 winning record. We love it. We love 2-1 winning. Make a move, buddy. Don't waste out my time. Don't waste Jeans' time. I gotta upload this video. And there it is. Battle is canceled. Two and one. After a little mistake by your boy in match number one, I made up with it by going back-to-back -back wins and grabbing ourselves a 2-1 winning record. But Haxorus with Dragoteer, so cool. Absolutely love this combo. Use it on Gold to go. Use it on Dragon Knight, even though it didn't really boost its crit too well. We didn't even get one crit on that scale shot, but still, you guys get the gist, and you guys understood the assignment with this one, because it was actually a lot of fun for me to use. Love this team so much. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread some positive every day, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.